coming to pick up the 13 model 648H. It's over here on a job. When I dropped this off, uh, I, I told the gentleman, which we'd cut timber on him before a few years back, I told him I didn't know if we would get to this in time because they, they row crop this, as you can see down here, which uh, this is all in the corner here. They've got this over here where the skitter's at in beams. And I knew it'd be close because we were just jam-packed busy this spring. So we were actually getting ready to start this. And he messaged me yesterday and said they've got it planted, which you can see there. They've just put that all in beams yesterday. So we're gonna go ahead and load this skitter up, get it over to the shop. It needs to be serviced anyway. And this 13 here, either the 13 or the 12, we're gonna sell one of them. We just don't know which one. Probably whichever one sells first, we'll keep the other. I don't really have a preference. I like them both. Uh, both really good machines. But we're going to eliminate having two of them and just uh, keep one of these 648s and run that in our 548. Because we've got to with the 548. It's just so much more versatile for us. So this is the second haul I've made to this Trail King, and we're getting ready to find out why or if I truly liked it like I thought I would. The biggest thing on this was the extra deck room, three more foot of deck versus the beaver we've got. And with these 648s, them being a little longer frame machine, that extra three foot is going to come in handy, but it's still going to fill that trailer up. We're not, we're not overloading the trailer of the truck, but um, need, to, need all the room we can get on that trailer to put her on there. It's been a while since the old girl's been started. She fires right up. Like I said, we need to get this to the shop. There's a few things that need to be serviced. It needs uh, oil and filters. You can see here, it's been throwing the water and fuel sensor code, which this thing is so fickle with that. Fickle, fickle, fickle. Uh, I've got some other things I'd like to do to it while we're there. I need to get this window here get that pop back in and replace it just some little odds and ends things that bug me hit knees on out here we'll see if we can get lined up and on this trailer and get her glued down again with the holiday weekend pretty much upon us not the greatest day to be moving wide oversized loads but we're gonna do it anyway We're up on here now. If I run wide loads like these 648s, I tend to load a little heavier over here to the right side, since that's the side that's kind of off in the ditch and not meeting traffic. I'd rather take out a sign or a mailbox. I would clip somebody's mirror or something along those lines. So that's why I do that. And it's not like we're, you know, a long ways over, but I try to give a few extra inches on my right side versus the uh, left side over here with traffic. All right, we got our banners on, flags on. This truck needs a bath in a bad way. I think I'm going to take it to the truck wash out in Stratford, Missouri this weekend. Me and the, my girlfriend, she uh, she thinks we're going for a big night out. Little does she know, she's getting a pretty fancy ride in the star, the star car to the truck wash. Maybe, maybe I'll take her to Arby's if she's lucky. Anyway. Chain down all four corners, center section, grapples down, flagging on our corners here. Here's uh, the, one of my favorite parts. I like that. I like that a lot. I don't know the overall height on this machine on here. Uh, we've talked about this before. I know we're tall. Uh, we're not so tall we've got to plan alternate routes but we're tall enough that we need to really watch where we go and what we go under now most of the places i go with these machines are places i've been to many many times uh i try to pay attention to everything i see on those roads low power lines underpasses etc 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 so we uh we've not had any problems yet so far like i said I don't know our exact height. I've run down the interstate with these. I know we can get under overpasses on the interstate other places, but if there was something real low, which something real low, you know, we're 
I still think we're under 14. Uh, regardless, we're doing all right. So let's get her back to the yard. So you can see in the mirror here, we're wide, but we're a little wider to this side over here. But as I previously stated, I like to load a little heavier to my right. Uh, some people may say I'm stupid, but it works for me. I, we have no trouble doing this. Uh, the main thing when I, you're hauling loads like this, I think, I, I just don't get in a hurry. I usually drive under the speed limit wherever I'm going. I just, I'm a real cautious driver when I'm hauling logs or when I'm hauling a skitter. I, I just don't see the need in getting in a big hurry. I want to get there and I want to get there safely. I want to make sure all the other motorists on the road are safe as well. I don't want them to have to worry about me or be alarmed by my crazy, wild, or reckless driving. That's why, like I said, I, I kind of leave the outlaw stuff for the kids anymore. We chain down in all corners, uh, flags, beacons, banners. My beacons on the truck are on right now. We just run down the road as safe as possible and like we're supposed to. And uh, again, just take our time. Just take our time, don't get in hurry. plan ahead. I know I sound like the guy at the DOT place, you know, talking to you before your pre-trip inspection, before you take your written test, but uh, yeah, there, there's no need to get in a hurry. Them, them trees ain't going anywhere. Just get there when you get there. Coming up on the highway here. I've got my Jake on already. And what I'm going to do when I get out of here on the big road, I'm going to go ahead and flip my tag down. But usually running back roads or side roads like this, I just leave it up. Even though that is a steerable tag, I usually don't put it on until I get out on the highway like this. Swing out wide here. We're going to go back south. I could go that way, but to get back on 54 Highway there in Nevada, there's literally a 90 degree turn there in town on the stoplight where traffic's usually bad. So we're just going to avoid that. And we're going to head on southbound here. We'll go down here and we'll cut back over and cross 71 Highway. Get on the blacktop, head right into Stockton. Get that tag on the ground there. Kind of give you an idea how wide we are and i'm kind of hugging the yellow line right now i can kind of if i kind of squeak over and run the white line uh, we can be running right on the right on the yellow so it's not like we're terribly over with here over with nonetheless but if i'm not seeing any oncoming traffic i'm usually riding this yellow line because i don't like to take the risk and dropping a duel off the side of the road on these narrow roads with no shoulders uh, it's a lot easier for a car or a truck to get off the road than it is me now, a quick stop, we'll check our chains. We're still pretty tight on everything. Make sure everything's still good and snug. These loads can sometimes work themselves loose, as you guys know. Right here, chain on my back, loose. That's why we stopped the check. Okay, we got that snug back up. Like I said, we'll walk around again, make sure all our flags and everything are there. Everything is good and tight. My banner in the back was starting to come down, so we resecured it. Make sure we don't get run over by traffic here. Everything looks good, so let's take her on home. We got about 30, maybe 35 miles. Pretty easy run, straight shot. Big roads right there, we're going right over top of it. So we're getting ready to take off here. Everything's firing up. See the lights are flashing on the drone here. We're starting up right here. Uh, I wish I knew more about this stuff. I'd try to sync all this to my phone where it did things, but I don't. Uh, are we done something wrong there? It does that occasionally. In that case, uh, I've learned that you've got to start the drone first, and then you got to fire up the controller here because my drone doesn't run off my phone. I know a lot of guys... Um, they use their phone for their controller on their drone, but I've got a handy dandy uh, control itself here. So see if we can get this fired up. Hopefully we've got good enough signal. We've got a lot of cover here in the treetops where we're going. All right. I think we're about ready to go here. She's up. Of course. Up, up, and away. We can see everything right here. I know it's kind of odd to look through uh, one video and do another here, but uh, you can kind of see the harvested area 
right in through there. That's kind of our log deck and we'll pan around here. So you can see our log road going through there. Not a lot of trees missing, as you can see. We just kind of, that little strip that runs through there on that ridge, of course that draws in there. If you look up, you can kind of see the creek down there, Monagaw Creek, uh, kind of a pond there. The big river's back over here. See it down there in the corner, Monagaw Creek runs in right there. Town of Monagaw's right in there. Big river over there, which uh, Johnny Morris owns Bass Pro Shops, owns like 3,000 acres right in there in the bend of the river. So these drones are pretty handy. We're at 130 meters in elevation, which I wish it did feed or yards, but we can we can uh, figure that the do the math there easy enough. But you can see how Monaga shifts back through there. But, uh, they're pretty handy, like I said, and I could hear it hovering overhead right now. So we'll bring that in for a landing here in just a second. Uh, I've got to use my other hand here because it takes two joysticks. Which I actually cheated this time. I hit the return to home button so you can, uh, if we can get the zoom right. That's uh, the truck right there where we're parked at. We've got the hazards on, so it's going to come right in and land here. Uh, I can actually hear it right now kind of hovering above us. We're dropping elevation, as you can see there. It's coming on in. These drones are pretty fascinating, especially this one here, this Mavic 3. Uh, Pretty high tech, it won't let you crash into anything, which you can see it right there. Coming right on in, gonna land where it took off. I've seen enough trees back there to kind of make me want to go back there and walk. I'll, I'll put it that way. I need to, if the leaves were off, I could have a little better idea what was uh, what was back there, but I didn't see enough white oak. But I think I'll go for the scroll real quick. It shouldn't take me too long to get over there and back. But. It's gonna land right here on the trailer where it took off from. Pretty cool stuff. That's it.